35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Welcome to Hack the Planet. This is episode number 450450, where we're celebrating the 54th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. Remember back to 1969, July 20th, two astronauts landed on the moon and set foot and walked around. Space is a cool place, so we're going to celebrate that tonight. So shout out to Trinity Love and the Joe Mack and the South Paw and the Resident and the Killer. To the Maxime. More info about this show at djfife.com. That's djpfeif.com. We got all the past shows and archives and playlists and good stuff. Some merch stuff. Some secret hacking stuff. All right, let's go to space. This is Hack the Planet.
Shots to the 170 crew. Taking us to space. Shots to the resident. Big ups rolling out to the ant. Control flow. Check this one out. Type dollar sign more in the chat. You'll get something. Uh, you get a lot of stuff.
board cut off exactly on schedule. Apollo 11, now 3,650 miles an hour. Downrange 35 miles, 30 miles high. Standing by for the outboard engine cut down now. Sound to the heathen hearts. The 413 is strong. stage engine that burned out exactly on schedule. The second stage engine that burned out. Houston thrusters go. All engines, you're looking good.
Wire correspondent Krim, along with correspondent Merrill Muller at the Cape, described the next critical maneuver. First, Krim. We just had TLI, trans maneuver to send the astronauts toward the moon. As soon as they get this maneuver out of the way and the the ejection of the Eagle Moon ship. Houston, uh, do you read over? to get the Eagle Moon ship away from the S-4B rocket. And when that's over, they will be able to take off all their flight gear, get into their flight coveralls, and relax for some lunch. to uh, Codename Records, pretending over some amazing tunes, as you're hearing right now. New label to keep an eye on, because it sounds like there's some real great stuff sounding on there. This is Hack the Planet.
relaxed they were as they sped towards the moon. Listen to Apollo Commander Neil Armstrong. Uh, Houston, uh, Apollo 11, that gave us a magnificent ride. Uh, Roger, 11, we'll pass that on, and it kind of looks like you're well on your way now. We, got, uh, we have no complaints with any of the three stages uh, on that, that ride. It was uh, beautiful. Uh, Roger, we copy. Uh, no transient staging of any significant source. That's right. It was all, uh, all a good ride.
soon it was Thursday. Astronaut Mike Collins was trying to sight a star. It's really a fantastic sight to that section. A minute ago during that uh, auto maneuver, uh, the radical swept across uh, the Mediterranean. You could see all of uh, North Africa absolutely uh, clear, all of Portugal, Spain, southern France, all of Italy absolutely clear. It's just a beautiful sight. Neil Armstrong made it sound almost cozy. I've been very busy so far. I'm looking forward to taking the afternoon off. I've been uh, cooking and uh, sweeping and almost sewing and, well, you know, the usual little housekeeping things. Down at Capcom, Jim Lovell, who had flown on a Gemini flight with Aldrin, asked him... How does it feel with the air warning? What's up, Wavelength recording from this one? Tune is called Dancing in the Rain. Forthcoming at a sub wavelength from Datu and Euphonics. Consistently putting out great tunes. Sub Wavelength for your listening pleasure here on Hack the Planet.
Apollo 11 put on a TV show for the world. came on camera. We are very comfortable up here, though. We do have a happy home. Uh, there's plenty of room for the three of us, and uh, I think uh, we're all learning to find our favorite little corner to, uh, to sit in. The zero G is very comfortable, but uh, after a while, you get to the point where you sort of get tired of rattling around and banging off the ceiling and the floor.
the capsule in a roll. Hey, uh, world, hold on to your hand. I'm going to turn you upside down. Yeah, that's great, sloppy guy. Let me try that one again. Thank you. 
vinegar three times for three ounces of hot water and then mush it up and uh, slice the end off it. There you go. Beautiful chicken stew. Actions are the only reason any hope remains.
Barman was in the Soviet Union. He was presented two medals from the wives of the cosmonauts, the Russian cosmonauts, who lost their lives in their space program. And at the request of their wives, he will leave those medals on the moon. They will also be taking with them the medals that were given to three of our astronauts who were killed in the Apollo flight. And they will leave on the moon the patches from those medals. And the president said Apollo 11 was carrying 50 flags from all the states to be brought back from the moon. While the astronauts were bringing those Russian medals to the moon, the Russians themselves had sent an unmanned spaceship to circle the moon ahead of Apollo 11. There was speculation Luna 15 would come down on the moon, scoop up some rocks, and return to Russia. Apollo 11 left the pull of Earth and entered the embrace of the moon. Armstrong and Aldrin crawled inside Eagle, the lunar lander. Everything okay. Around the moon, 
spun the Russian Luna 15. The Russians assured the U.S. it wouldn't endanger Apollo 11. Apollo 11. Apollo 11. Apollo 11. Apollo 11. Saturday afternoon. The hour had arrived for Apollo to orbit the moon. The LOI. Bruce McCandless in Houston passed up the word.
20 minutes later, Neil Armstrong, about 100 miles away from the moon, said... Pictures and maps brought back by Apollo 810. Uh, a very good uh, preview of what to look at here. Uh, looks very much like the picture, but uh, like the difference between watching a real football game and one on TV. Uh, no substitute for actually being here.
5,200 feet. Manual attitude control is good. Roger, copy. Altitude 4,200. Houston, you're a go for landing, over. I do understand, go for landing. Great down, let's see. Bravo 1. Bravo 1. Roger, 1201 alarm. We're go, same time, we're go. 2,000 feet, 2,000 feet, into the ag, 47 degrees, roger. 37 degrees. Eagle looking great, here go. Altitude 1600. 1400 feet, still looking very good. Roger, 1202, we copy it. 35 degrees. 35 degrees, 750. Coming down to 23. 700 feet, 21 down. 33 degrees. 100 feet down to 19. 540 feet down to 30. Down to 15. And 400 feet down to 9. Stay forward. 150 feet down to 4. Good half down. 60 seconds. Lights on. Down two and a half. Forward. Forward. Good. 40 feet down, two and a half. Picking up some dust. 30 feet, two and a half down. Big shadow. Four forward. Four forward, just into the right little. Down and a half. 30 seconds. Forward, just. Good. Hey. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. NGA at a defense. Host control, both auto defense and command override off. Engine arm off. 
photography on the sequence camera. Um, uh, at the foot of the ladder, the lamp footbeds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, uh, although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder.
Thank you. 
office now and would like to say a few words to you, over. That would be an honor. Uh, go ahead, Mr. President. This is Houston out. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world, I am sure they too join with the in recognizing what an immense feat this is. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. And as you talk to us from the sea of tranquility, it inspires us to redouble our efforts to bring peace and tranquility to Earth. For one priceless moment in the whole history of man, all the people on this Earth are truly one. One in their pride in what you have done and one in our prayers that you will return safely to Earth. Collins circling in Columbia. The crew of Tranquility Base is back inside their base. 
the emphatic and to all the mugshin crew we're celebrating the 53rd anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing on the moon from July 20th 1969 After a stay of 21 hours and 36 minutes on the moon, Eagle has lifted off and has gone into lunar orbit. Mike Collins in Columbia is waiting now. In a few hours, they will actually have the rendezvous, and then they will be reunited. All three Apollo astronauts will be together again.
We're out of contact with them now. We've had loss of signal. They're both around to the far side. The Eagle and the Columbia Command Module emerge from behind the moon shadow back into radio view of the manned space flight tracking network about 13 or 14 minutes from now. Columbia, the command module, is about 15 miles above and about 150 miles ahead, leading Eagle as they together orbit the moon, heading out toward the near side. Well, I wonder if he's able to see them. He should be able to see them from that distance. Let's go uh, back to Houston, where uh, David Snell is uh, waiting to talk with astronaut Jim McDivitt. Explain what uh, the astronauts are doing now. Well, the command module is looking at the lunar module, and he's tracking the lunar module tracking light with his optics, and he has a VHF ranging device which uh, tells him how far away the other spacecraft is. In the lunar module, they have their radar locked onto the command module, and they'll be tracking the command module, and be feeding this information, range and range rate and angles, into their computer. Uh, the computer on board the command module is computing one solution, that on board the LEM is computing another. Uh, they compare these solutions and uh, using charts and pencils and papers and many other things, they come up with a, a solution to each one of the maneuvers that they have. The ground has already provided them with some information so that they are really choosing from about five or six answers and they're taking the best one of the bunch. They're talking to one another now up there, so let's go to mission control and pick up this conversation between the two spacecraft. And they're very close, uh, Frank. Armstrong has just told Collins he's about to turn it over to the docking. Matter of fact, I could stop right here if you like that. That's Armstrong. The key man in this maneuver now is really Mike Collins, isn't it? Right, uh, because as we saw in our simulation, Frank, uh, after the Eagle, the lunar module gets within a few feet. It's, it's impossible, as Jim McDivitt explained to us earlier, to clearly see the uh, docking target on the command module. Uh, Eagle, Houston, uh, middle gimbal. And you might pass the Columbia. We don't have him yet. That's right. I'm not going to do a thing, Mike. I'm just letting her hold. Attitude hold. Okay. Eagle, Houston, One or, their, one or both of their antennas are out of position, and Houston apparently doesn't want to bother them with it while they're in this critical docking phase. Okay, we're all yours. Okay. That's it. 
This is Apollo Control. Communications are somewhat scratchy with Apollo 11. Columbia and Eagle now reunited to become Apollo 11 again. Aldrin crawled back into their home aboard Columbia. Ron Evans in Houston to Collins. Mark, you go for power arm and you go for jettison. Okay. That meant goodbye to Eagle, sent off to circle the moon, its task done. A moment of relaxation after breaking out of moon orbit, Apollo heading for Earth. Charlie Duke in Houston to Mike Collins. How's it feel up there to have some company? Damn good, I'll tell you. I bet, I bet you almost be talking to yourself up there. Tuesday now, 1.40 p.m. 
Bruce McCandless in Houston passed up the word. Stand by for a mark, leaving the lunar sphere of influence. competition. Luna 15 is believed to have crashed into the Sea of Crises yesterday after orbiting the moon 52 times. The Soviet news agency task reported that quote. Later, Apollo sharpened its aim towards Earth. Doug Ward in Houston announced that mid-course correction was performed uh, at a distance of about 169,000 nautical miles from the Earth. A spacecraft velocity 4,075.6 feet per second. The uh, notion of space voyages, of course, is almost as old as man's understanding of the existence of space vastnesses and the distances involved. Sometimes science fiction has been wise and perceptive, sometimes it has been inaccurate. But one of the uh, space pioneers of our time, Dr. Werner von Braun, points out that only the most advanced modern technology has really made these journeys possible. Jules uh, asked Dr. von Braun to comment on the old dreams and the modern reality. Flashdown.
Captain, uh, you're still looking mighty fine here. Uh, you're cleared for landing. Capcom, Ron. Yeah, we appreciate that, Ron. Thank you. Roger, gear stand and lock. Roger.
8 o'clock drum and bass association. Let's meet right now. Get yourself to a light source where you can flashlight twice times on my mark. We're going to let the world know that we're in solidarity with all the members of the 8 o'clock drum and bass association, making the world a little bit of brighter place. Flash those lights one time, two times. quickly, and the astronauts were then hoisted aboard the helicopter from the carrier Hornet, where President Nixon watched in obvious excitement. He waited to personally welcome them after they'd entered the mobile quarantine facility, where they were to begin their 17-day isolation. several trips in 1969, Apollo missions to the moon in 70 and 71 and 72. We kept going back. And then we didn't go back again. So tonight we hacked the moon. And had a really good time doing it. I am TJ Fife on behalf of everybody here at Hack the Planet. The Uptown Contingent, the Lady Fife, the Little Fife, the Deepest Darkest Murphy, and the North. The Dave, Leandra, and Eliza. The Catbot 69. The Double Troubles on the ones and the twos. And on behalf of DJs everywhere. On behalf of Vinny, that's skinny Vinny. Lucy and her eponymous, <laughs> not eponymous, and the enigmatic boyfriend. 
Johnny, and of course, Jamila with the cream soda. As Nyad says, you've been mooned. On behalf of all these people, I am DJ5 saying we'll see you next week. Thanks for hacking the moon with us. Stay tuned next week for when we do something else quite interesting and fun. Thanks for rocking along. We'll see you next week.